Welcome to Draw This. In this episode, we're going to draw a pair of scissors. I'm going to draw these scissors as vector art inside of Adobe Illustrator CC. I'm going to create a letter-sized artboard, and I'm going to select the Ellipse Shape Tool. I'm going to change the stroke to 10 points, and I'm going to select No Fill. I'm going to make sure that the stroke is set to black. And then I'll draw an oval over on the right side of the artboard. Hold Alt and drag, and that makes a nice duplicate there. And then we can nudge that with the arrow keys. If you hold Shift, you'll nudge in larger increments. We'll increase the stroke width by selecting both of the rings and then increasing or decreasing the stroke width till you get something you like. And let's go ahead and move one of these rings so that there's a minute little gap between them. Next, we'll select the rectangle shape tool and we'll go ahead and draw a rectangle. This will define the width of the blade and the length. We'll go ahead and use the direct selection tools to move the anchor points on the right end. We'll space them out five nudges each from the top and bottom using the arrow keys. Then we'll select the add anchor point tool under the pen and we'll go ahead and add an anchor point very centered right on the blade. We'll go ahead and nudge it to the left a little bit to create a point. Then we'll drag the two middle points down to the right, and we'll use the direct selection tool to go ahead and drag on the little dot that's next to the anchor points, which creates a nice curvature to the edge. You may have to drag it really far up and down, so I made sure to zoom out a little bit. To zoom out, you use Alt on your keyboard. Went ahead and zoomed back in. I'm gonna center that blade, and then I'm going to group the two rings with Control G. Then I'll go ahead and align them horizontally. Next I'll ungroup the rings because we don't need them grouped anymore. We just did that to get everything aligned. And I'm going to go ahead and move those to the right a little bit to create a little bit of a gap between the blades and the rings. Next I'll select the line tool and I'll go ahead and use that to attach the blade to the rings. I want to make sure it attaches right on the center of that ring. We'll go ahead and add an anchor point somewhere in the middle there to create a little bit of a bend, and we'll use the direct selection tool to go ahead and move that point and all the other points around to get the shape that we want. Once all of our nodes are in position and everything lines up, we can go ahead and reshape the blade a little bit by selecting the bottom right node and moving it a little bit to the left. We want the angle to match the angle of the bend. We'll select the blade in a line and group them, then we'll copy and paste in place. That creates a duplicate right in place. Then we'll select Transform Reflect and reflect it horizontally. That flips it upside down. We'll move it down to align the blades right on top of each other. And then we'll go ahead and group each side of the scissors. We'll group the bottom side, then we'll group the top side. Now what we want to do is we want to select all the sides and choose Object Expand. That's going to expand the stroke because we're going to want to fuse some of these layers together. So we'll select one side, we'll look, go to the Pathfinder, and we'll choose Unite. We'll do the same thing for the bottom side. We'll choose Unite. Next, let's select the Ellipse tool. We'll go ahead and draw a little dot right in the center. This will be the axis where the scissors connect. We'll hold Shift and Alt to draw a perfect circle. And then we'll go ahead and change the color to white. We'll want to drag it to make sure that it's centered on the blades using the Smart Guides. Then we'll go ahead and move it to slightly right of center on the whole object there. We'll use the rotate tool and we'll click right in the center of the dot. That'll define the axis. And we'll drag each side to rotate it a little bit to open the scissors. Try to open them an equal distance, so pay attention to the guide number that it gives you there. We'll go ahead and select both sides. And now let's color this by applying a gradient in the gradient palette. If you click More Options, you'll go ahead and click on the Gradient Slider, and you can drag swatches onto that slider. You can go ahead and move the swatches around to arrange the gradient however you like. I'm going to also go ahead and make sure that the opacity is set to 100% for each of these swatches so that there's no transparency. After we've colored it, let's select all the sides, and we'll choose Effect, 3D, Extrude, and Bevel. We'll change the position to Front, and go ahead and change all of your settings to what I have here. Extrude depth 25, height 3 pixels. I'm using a tall round bevel, and I'm going to move my light over to the left. Now we have a nice bevel effect. We'll select the center circle, and we'll add a little bit of shading to that. We'll go to the gradient palette, and we'll apply a gradient to that. 
we can use the same gradient that we used for the rest of the scissors. We'll go ahead and click on that and choose Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. That'll add a little bit of a drop shadow. You want to make it kind of discreet, so go ahead and lower some of these settings till you get something that you like. Clicking on the preview really helps you to be able to see what you're getting. And I think those settings will work there. And as a final step, we'll want to select everything and choose Object Expand Appearance. That way, if you want to transform or rotate this, you won't have any issues with it changing the way it looks. You can go ahead and rotate it, scale it, do whatever you want with these scissors now. So there you go, that's how you can create a realistic pair of scissors in vector format using Adobe Illustrator CC. If you enjoyed this episode of Draw This, you can join me every Tuesday for a new episode. So go ahead and take a quick second to like this video, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button to get updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.